I'm curious, what is your relationship to deadlines and metrics? Well, if you have been resistant towards them, maybe it feels like it is constraining your soulful expression and the love in the moment. And yet you also sense that there is value uh, if you were able to utilize deadlines and metrics in a more um, wise manner, then I think this video might be interesting for you. So one of my students who has uh, who, who knows a lot of my content uh, wrote uh, this insightful comment that I want to share with you. Um, I'll just summarize it for you because it's kind of a long comment. Basically, she notices that her mind tends to set up goals and plans and especially timelines to complete things. And then, of course, often as often does, uh, the plans get thrown off and things tend to start for her after the end of that arbitrary deadline. And so at first she thought, well, I just need to get better at doing things on time. But then she realized after some reflection, inner reflection, that she believes the mind seems to set an arbitrary, when the, when the mind sets an arbitrary deadline, it puts bars on the time. And when the soul knows deep down it's meant to be free, or rather she wrote the human knows deep down it's meant to be free, and avoids the arena that is caged, and then wait until the cage disappears due to the deadline expiring before starting to work on it. You know, very, very insightful. And she wrote, it's sovereignty expressing. And what's needed isn't to control more, but to instead to retain the structure and release the walls. Yeah. She also wrote about how smart goals, you know, the S-M-A-R-T, smart goals, feels like they're squeezing the life out of intention setting, soulful intention setting. And that ultimately what matters more is for love to be explored and experienced and expressed, even as we do things in human form. I totally agree with that. I mean, what, what's more important in this life than letting love rule in every moment of every day, right? Yet often, the egoic mind, the little S self, the, the, the deadlines, deadlines set by the little S self and the metrics can squeeze out the love in the moment or even deaden, deadline, deaden, take the soul out of our goals and visions. Well, can anyone relate to this? <laughs> My guess is that a lot of us here watching, uh, a lot of you watching this can relate to this because, you know, the folks I tend to draw to me are more soulful, um, driven by spiritual things instead of by, you know, materialistic ambitions. And yet you also probably have a business you want to build and have a true livelihood you want to create, which you know, if you work with clients or if you uh, if you launch things, there are inevitably some kind of deadline or you know, even preparing for a client meeting, there's a deadline to that, right, et cetera. Although you might say, well, a client meeting is different because it's really service to other and I'm really preparing in service to other rather than with a deadline that I set myself for my launch or my blog post or whatever, it might seem more service to self with small s self, like it's an arbitrary, you know, egoic set deadline. So what do I have to say to this, right? And I'll, 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 of course, couch it in the perspective of authentic business because that's what most, mostly what I talk about. Um, so actually, if you look more and more deeply into my joyful productivity methods, I have tons of videos for free on YouTube uh, under the joyful productivity playlist. You can look for that. Um, I, think it's, I think it's aligned. I think it's aligned. Joyful productivity is this marriage between the spiritual and the material, the left brain and the right brain, the transcendent and the, uh, what's the opposite of transcendent, the grounded, <laughs> something like that, the up and the down, right? It's, 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 this, it's this integration where, yes, we, <clears throat> we want to be living as spiritual a life as possible. Of course, that's what I value and, and treasure the most as well. We want to be living in as much alignment with the divine calling and the divine still small voice as possible, of course. 
of course, what's more important? <laughs> what's more important than connecting with the divine source at every moment of every day? I can't think of anything more important. There's no deadline more important. Nothing is more important. And yet, why are we here? Why, why, why aren't we in heaven, just in the soul world, just connecting with the divine 24-7, of course, or there is no time in the soul, soul world. Anyway, I'm, I'm, if I'm going a bit into my spiritual worldview here, but you know, bear with me and interpret this how you will. But there, <clears throat> there is no time. There are no de- therefore, there are no deadlines. There is no, there is no limitation, and therefore, there's no need for structure in the spiritual world, you might say, in the wordless world, in the world where all is provided to you abundantly forever and ever. And there is no fear. There is no need. Why aren't we just there? Well, yeah, that, that's, that's, our, that's our sort of intuitive sense of what is right, what is true, what is what, what, who we are. Why aren't we just there? Why are we here? Why are we here in this limited earth life where ev- there's only 24 hours to a day, right? Or, you know, there, even the def- definition of an hour or a day, right? There, but the, but the, we know that the sun goes up and down, you know, that, the, that there is daylight and there's night and that we, we get hungry. We, that, that happens. Every, we get hungry every couple hours or, you know, I don't know, if you're fasting every couple of days or whatever. whatever. We have limitations here. We got to. Most of us who live in homes need to pay rent. Why? Why, why taxes? Why do we, we have to support the government in, well, in paving the roads, <laughs> whatever, um, supporting the military? I mean, wh- wh- why are there limitations in this life? Why, are we, why did we choose to be here? Why are we here? Well, if there was no need for structure, again, we would be there. And for those who uh, decide to, to, to live a life completely without structure, you will soon be there. <laughs> okay. You'll soon go back because you'll, you'll start to death and you'll, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll be, you know, anyway. So we are here, I believe to play with these rules, to play with limitation boundaries. I know a lot of us who are spiritual are terrible at boundaries. We don't have boundaries for others. We don't have bound just service to others all the time, whatever they need. Sure. We don't have boundaries with our own self-care. We don't have boundaries. We do, because we are so enamored with the truth of who we are, which is unlimited, uh, unbounded, uh, always supported. We don't need to pay rent. Oh, wait, we do need to pay rent here. But over there, we don't need to pay rent. <laughs> you know, we are so um, still connected, so connected still to the eternal life that we we are sh- shocked by what's needed to be done here. We feel resistance because it seems wrong to have to work towards deadlines like paying the rent, uh, work towards deadlines like f- having enough money to feed ourselves and our families. It feels unnatural, right? Because what's natural, because we are so connected to the soul and so um, not connected to society's rules, because we're so connected to the soul that society rule society's rules and therefore deadlines and metrics corporate <laughs> corporate things seem so unnatural and therefore we're naturally resistant towards it but joyful productivity says yeah i i we understand i understand we all understand that the soul is the truth that love in the moment is the truth that love wants to be expressed at all moments without deadlines without just Free hippie, hippie love. You see what I mean? I mean, it's the hippie movement, essentially what you're going for. Um, you know, do what you love. Follow your bliss. Uh, in, in terms of like, who cares about deadlines and schedules and calendars, George? That's all corporate, you know? No, joyful productivity understands the intuition of your soul and the impulse of the deep, deep impulse and... Um, Sort of like it's almost like a, you requ- your you require yourself to live a soul filled life. Yes, of course, and yet, and yet, I'm reminded of the movie The Matrix, and remember Matrix One. Remember when uh, the chosen one Neo goes to visit the Oracle, 
And in the waiting room of the Oracle, there are, you know, these various children, kids who are like, you know, uh, doing things that are outside the laws of physics, like making things float or whatever. And then, and then he goes to one kid who is um, bending, who's making a spoon bend just by will, not by using, using force, physical force, but just by looking at the spoon and the spoon bends. And Neo says, how do you do that? You know, and then the, the kid basically says, you know, watching the spoon bend, says, there is no spoon. <laughs> He's like, it's easy if you realize there is no spoon. And so to that, I apply it to our situation and say, there is no cage. My, my student who said, well, deadlines and metrics feel like a cage on the mind. And so I want to escape the cage. And once the cage is over, when the deadline's passed, then I feel liberated to work. And I said, well, what if you didn't see deadlines and metrics as a cage, but instead see them as tools for the soul to play and grow in this life? There's a reason you are here rather than over there where there is no, truly there is no cage and there's no deadline. You're here. And what if deadlines and metrics, goals, plans, calendars, and schedules, and rent and taxes are tools that, that, that have been given for the soul to play with in this earth game. I see this as an earth game. And if, if you two can take on that view, Imagine, okay, just imagine with me that this is the earth game. You, your soul goes, hey, you know what? It's too easy over here. Too easy. And there's this unlimited food. <laughs> we didn't even need food over there, but unlimited pleasure, unlimited creativity, unlimited love, unlimited time and energy to connect deeply with every soul and with the divine. It's just, it's all, it's all so easy here. And the soul says, hey, why don't we go play that game that we've heard is really, really hard. Maybe the hardest game. Uh, one of the hardest games. It's called Earth, and you get to live for you know however long. Some 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 of us live for eighty years. Some of us live you know for a month. You know whatever. Um, anyway, so let's go play that game. It's really hard. And basically, what you do is we're gonna we're gonna take on these tools called deadlines and rent and <laughs> the need to feed yourself and your family and and hardship in the world and calendars and. We're going to use those tools to grow ourselves. We're going to, we're, because it's going to be harder. It's going to be harder there to create, to serve others uh, while serving yourself. You're going to have this thing called the body that needs to be fed and slept and cared for. And, and, and then, of course, the body needs to be cared for so that you can survive this game, so that you can survive long enough to help other people too. And then you got to balance it back with helping yourself. And yet you, what, while you help yourself, you can't become too selfish and only help yourself and accumulate so much without you know, realizing, oh my God, oh, so much of this can go to others as well. Yeah, let's go play that game. And in that game, you can, um, you know, again, you, you, if you take care of yourself and build your business and make money, then you can help more people. And even while you're building your business, you're helping, you can build a business that is about helping others, but, but helping others while keeping good boundaries so that you take money from them in terms of your services and not just give everything away for free, even though you want to, this person can't pay you. You still want to help them, but then, but then you can't take care of yourself as well. And your, 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 your family as well. And you, you're going to, let's play that game where we learn how to deal with these dynamics and build our business while also in service to others and still take care of ourselves enough and get enough rest and, and charge enough money. And let's go play that game and have deadlines where we, we have to launch things because we think this will be helpful for others. And then they end up not buying it. <laughs> and so we have to figure something else out and talk to them and see what we can do, create offer that's more aligned for them right now. And, and then we have to launch things with, with the deadline so that we can make enough money so that we can continue serving others and balancing ourselves. And let's go play that game. It sounds fun. <laughs> the soul said, uh, and you're going to meet this guy named George Cow, who will remind you of these things and remind you that these deadlines, um, the world will tell you deadlines are serious and deadlines need to be, you know, taken with, 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 uh, 
with self-flagellation if you miss the deadlines and you need to hustle and you need to you need to um, do things from a place of fear, uh, fear of um, not not being able to pay the rent and fear of others not liking you and and fear of you not liking yourself. And you need to the, the, the world will tell you all these things and just not even tell you, but just subtly put those values in you and and your job and George Calvert will remind you of this is to see them, those things as, yeah, I understand if I'd go from a fear-driven place, those things are soul stifling. And yet I can also take the same exact tools of deadlines, goals, paying the rent, uh, taking care of ourselves, uh, charging people money. We could take all those tools and see it as soul's play. Soul's play, because knowing that it's okay if we die, <laughs> It's really okay if we die. We just go back there and we could play again if we want to. It's okay if we die. It's really okay. So it's all good. It's deeply, deeply, deeply all good. Like it's okay if you don't pay rent and get, become homeless and you die. So what? Your soul goes back there, get to rest a little bit, enjoy all the abundance of eternity, and then come back here and play more if you want to. You can play the authentic business game again if you want to. The fact that you're watching this, the fact that you're watching this means that. The fact that you're watching this, and especially if you watch my other videos, if you're somehow drawn to my message, then my guess is that your soul chose so-called authentic business, what I call it. You won't call it whatever you want. Chose authentic business as one of your missions here, one of, maybe one of your primary missions here. And so authentic business requires an authentic business, <laughs> again, those two words is, are a marriage of the spiritual and the material. Authentic is the authentic soul's expression, love in the moment, holding that understanding that all is well and that we want to express love with the grounded nature of this earth game business, which requires you to launch things in a timely way if you want to pay rent launch things in a way that actually gets people to pay you money, which means having timely conversations with your audience. You know, you can't take that much time to do it, right? Because if you take so much time, you, you can't pay rent, you're out in the street and then you die and then you go back there and you got to come back and play the game again, <laughs> okay? So timely is what business brings us. The authentic part goes, how can I thrive with my soul's love expression free, freely? within the bounds of time that I set for myself. No one else is going to set it for you. I'm not going to set it for you. If, you. if I set it for you, you'll start to resent me. If I tell you, hey, you didn't launch your thing by this date, then you'll start feeling resistant towards me, right? It's, it's your soul goes, well, wait a second. Let, let's, let's find sovereignty, right? My, my student said it's sovereignty expressing itself, not wanting to be caged by deadlines and metrics. And I say, wait, a, wait, wait a second. Joyful productivity, authentic business. The understanding is true sovereignty in this life is to learn how to use these soulful tools of deadlines, calendar, metrics, goals, timelines. Hey, I'm going to better get this blog post written by the end of the hour, not as or else I'm going to look down on myself or else I'm less worthy or whatever. No, I'm going to get this blog post down by the end of the hour as a soul's play tool. Hey, well, let me see what happens. Let me see if I can create freely within this hour and then release it at the end of this hour without judgment to myself, without judgment. Because why can't you release a blog post at the end of the hour? It feels constraining, George. I want my soul to play for 12 hours, 18 hours to write this blog post. Okay, you could do that, but if you keep letting yourself do that, you can't pay the rent anymore. You won't be able to create on time launch on time. I mean, launch within enough time to pay the rent. Why can't you do it in an hour? Really? Oh, my soul is constrained. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a cage. No, no. You see it that way. It's, it's still the voice of the world. The soul goes, well, why can't we see that there is no spoon? That this one hour is just a playful thing. It's just, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try doing an hour noticing that I, I'm, I'm, I'm resistant to doing it in an hour or whatever. I'm not saying an hour is what some kind of magical number it could be two hours it could be four hours but i'm just saying within a timely way of doing everything in your business in a timely way why can't you do it in a timely way that you set 
sovereignty. Talk about sovereignty. Why couldn't you set your own deadline and meet it with a soulful playfulness going, if I can't meet it, it's because I'm judging myself. It's because I'm saying it's not good enough. I, and, and it's also, by the way, the ego is so wily, is so tricky that it says it's not, it's not really the soul's, it's at the end of the hour, it's not really the soul's expression yet. So I can't release it out. It's not really my soul expressing itself. Oh, I can't express myself in an hour. I need four hours. Who said that? You're, you're giving your own, your own egoic limitations here. Do you see what I mean? That's the real cage. That's the real cage. You, why couldn't you do something in 10 minutes rather than you know, an hour even? Why couldn't you release a piece of creative work in 10 minutes? Of course you can. Who's to say it's not creative enough? Your, e your ego is, is being all wily and say, well, intuition says I got to keep going. Your intuition? Really? How do you know it's not your ego talking? Oh, I, 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 I'm much more practiced, George. I'm much more spiritual than you. I know what's intuition and what's, what's ego. Really? Really? Mm, that's interesting. That's interesting. I question myself all the time. And I go, I know what's true. What's true? What's truly spiritual? I, in my opinion, again, I'm sorry. <laughs> you and I can, can, can argue here for sure. Um, what's truly spiritual, capital T, what's true is there is the eternal world. And I chose to come here and play. I know that's true. I don't know in the moment whether this is my intuition speaking to say, well, you, you can't keep yourself to this hour of creation. You really need to go longer. I believe that's my ego. I believe that's my ego tricking me to say that that's my intuition, spiritual channeling, saying whatever, that I need to keep going and that I can't launch this thing yet. It's not good enough. It's not soulful enough. Really? Really? I don't know. I have, I have therefore, knowing these perspectives, lived by a calendar for years I have a thriving business, so I've got the material side set. And throughout all the calendaring and all the going by my schedule, I still do, my, do what I can to express my soul in every moment, just like I have tried to do in this video. But I need to end this video now. I, I could, my soul, my intuition says to keep going, right? To keep go, I could keep going for another eight hours, my intuition says. But again, how, how do I know that's not, not just an ego saying, George, you sound really good right now and you should keep talking. And then that feels natural and, and flow to keep talking. I have a deadline to say, I got to stop my video now. I got to go and publish the blog post associated with this, da, 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 be before this deadline ends. Right. But again, I'm not seeing the deadline as some kind of cage and some kind of, you know, restricting of my soul. I'm just saying, whatever, it's all soul. It's all soul, really. And I'm playing here. I, and, and maybe that's, maybe I'll end, I'll end it here. When I play, then I feel it's soul, soul's expression. Maybe that's it. it. Rather than working with resentment and fear and uh, resistance, that's probably less soul. Maybe. Who knows? I don't know. But I know when I, when I play, it feels more, it feels more soulful. But I can play in 20 minutes. I don't have to play it for, for another 20 minutes here. I, I'm done with this video. I'm done playing for now. My, my calendar says, and let me go play with something else now. So anyway, I, I, uh, I hope this little bit of a rant is um, interesting at the least, maybe opens up something for you. Uh, I would be curious to know how you'd like to argue with me below because I, I, I'm not right. I'm just sharing what's playful for me right now. Okay, so if you can take this and, and make it useful to you, uh, wonderful. If it's delightful to you, wonderful. If it's not, I either way, I'd love to hear, uh, see what your thoughts are below. Thanks. Thanks for joining me on this journey. I really, really wish you well.